Welcome back to Caravan of Garbage, everybody, where we look at a thing. It could be good, it could be terrible. I was weighing up on which Jason Statham is in a driving movie to do in relation to the Fast and Furious spin-off release, right? But it turns out, mm -hmm. and we'll confirm or deny this at the end, that the Fast and Furious may be in the same universe as the Italian Job 2003 universe, which, by the way, isn't set in the same universe as the original Italian Job because they show that on a TV at one point in the movie despite Mark Wahlberg's character having the, the same, same name, name as, the, as, as Michael, Michael Caine's, Caine's character, yeah. <laughs> also, if you could leave this video a like, that would be absolutely swell. It helps out in more ways than you can possibly imagine. I hated this when it came out. I didn't see it when it came out. Right. This is, this is my first viewing of this movie. Okay. Because... First of all, I really like the original. Yes, me with, too. With Sir Michael Caine. Mm. It's kind of slow, mm -hmm. but it's also kind of kooky and fun yeah. and, and a lot of colourful characters. I don't want to besmirch that with this new version. Also, the 2003 version famously had a trailer that revealed the entire movie in it. I think that's why I didn't like it. Yeah, right. Those exact two reasons. Uh -huh. That being said, going back to this... It's quite good. It's held up, yeah. I think. <laughs> yes. It's really exceeded my expectations of a movie that I didn't see 15 years ago. Some some of it has not aged well. Yeah. The soundtrack has not aged well, no. certainly. There's a boom cat <laughs> song on this. On this. Okay, right. Sometimes I feel like I'm stuck in the movie yesterday, but I'm the only person in the world who still remembers boom cat. But what do you do with that information? Not, yeah, everything's the same. There's no change. It exists in a post-Ocean's 11 yes. remake world so there's a lot of people staring at computers with like 3D yeah. models moving around while there's like heist music playing. Well I guess so but I feel like this is more of a Fast and Furious movie than some of the early Fast and Furious movies including the one that came out that year which was too Fast, Too Furious. Uh -huh. For one, that movie doesn't use a lot of real cars in it. Well, I was going to say, Too Fast, Too Furious isn't a car movie. It's Pe Speed Racer. It's Speed Racer. <laughs> it's people yelling, and then we watch a video game. Yeah. It's Skywalker! Because none of those cars are real, nor do they look real in that movie. But this movie, credit to F. Gary Gray, whose output I've variously enjoyed or not enjoyed over the years. Including a Fast and Furious movie. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Everything in this movie is real. Yes. To, to the best of my knowledge. There's like a hundred car traffic jam at one point. Yep. It's all real cars. They got 30 real minis. Crashed that, several of them. crashed most of yeah. them, I think. They hit one with a helicopter. Yep, they certainly did. And I think that's why it holds up. Yeah. Because it all feels real. And also they got the actual actors to do most of the stunt driving. Charlize Theron was apparently the best by far. Apparently the producers went to her initially and were, and were like, we're going to build you a custom automatic car and we're going to give you an extra two weeks of driving school just in case. And she was oh, like... Oh, because you're a girl. Yeah, and she was like, fuck off. <laughs> so, <laughs> take all the gears out. In fact, take the accelerator out. Take the floor out. I'm going to drive it like a Flintstones car. <laughs> So yeah, I thought that was really interesting. And the other thing about the cars is you would actually go into the subway at one point. Yes. For real. Mm -hmm. You can't bring a gas-powered car into a real subway in Los oh, Angeles. Oh, so nuclear-powered. Nuclear-powered, exactly. No, they ended up having to custom-make three electric minis oh. just to make that scene happen. The original minis, by the way, absolute death traps. <laughs> sure. People were rolled and crushed and mashed and killed and torn apart. They're a horrible car. If you if you would have run across the road too quickly and you clipped <laughs> one with your foot, it didn't flip. But I remember back in 2003, you had a problem with that new version of the Mini. And They're why just regular that? sized They're cars. They're regular cars, aren't they? They're just regular sized cars. <laughs> this is also apparently said to be one of the best examples of modern brand integration in a movie. Because uh -huh. the entire movie is an ad for Mini Coopers. And stolen gold. And Napster. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's actually the real Sean Fanning in this movie. Who oh, makes see, the cameo, creator of Napster. Yeah, okay, right. In that uh -huh. moment, yeah. I find the cast of characters pretty compelling all in all. I really like most Def, but there is a Chekhov's he's scared of dogs moment there absolutely planted. Is, yeah. It uh -huh. comes up a couple of times, but uh -huh. he never confronts dogs. Or explains his story. That's true. He doesn't have to deal with any of it. Well, that was going to be the sequel. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, uh, the Italian... Brazilian Dogs. Yeah, the Brazilian <laughs> There was a sequel called The Brazilian Job. Uh, apparently, it's still in the works. What do you think of the actual Italian Job in this movie? I got the impression that this was like a like a heist movie script for something else. Right. And they got the rights to the Italian Job, and then they just put some minis in it. But apparently, this is like the writers of this saw the original Italian Job once mm. and then wrote a script. It's barely an Italian Job. Yeah. There is an Italian Job in it. I think mistake in this movie is though that they didn't have Michael Caine play his original character and just put him in the Donald Sutherland role. Yeah, just I have him come back that. and do a last because heist. he did he did come back for the Stallone remake of Get Carter. Yes, I think though at this point they hadn't quite perfected the how do we get people to come back for the remakes. Yeah, 
right. kind of thing. So maybe they didn't even tell him they were going to do an, ocean, mm. an Italian job. The second heist is quite good. And what I like about it is they plan it in its entirety mm-hmm. and then they just throw it out. And yeah, they do right. an entirely new one and it kind of keeps it fresh and you're on edge because you know Edward Norton is ready for it yes. and they got to do a lot of this stuff on the fly mm. and I find that really compelling. That's what worked about this mm. and what didn't work about say, some more recent heist movies like Ocean's 8. And also, a lot of the Ocean's movies, it's mostly told in flashback. They're like, no, we already we already stole it like three weeks ago. <laughs> right. Like that Fabergé <laughs> egg from Ocean's 12 or yeah, whatever, right. whatever uh-huh. that movie's about. Charlie's Theron as the safe cracker. Yes. She ends up cracking that last safe by touch. But if I had that exact safe in front of me, I could also hear when it clicked over really loudly <laughs> sure, onto, right. the, onto the numbers uh-huh. that opened the safe. Uh-huh. But would you believe it? <laughs> She's fought through the mental barrier of this would be this is too easy. Yeah, right. Because what you'd be like is you'd be like, tuk, 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 click. Nah, that can't be right. I'll start again. <laughs> nah, and then they'd be on you. Yeah, right. But she's like, no, this is quite easy. You're right. No, I, I would, see what you're I saying. Second guess I, myself. My assumption was when she when we hear her crack that safe, mm. that's only in her head. Yeah, you're, Everybody you're right. Everybody else can't hear it. You're absolutely yeah. right. One of the reasons that I avoided this maybe for so long watching the remake is because Mark Wahlberg's in it, and yes. I hate Mark Wahlberg. He's a hero. He could have stopped 9-11. Well, that's true. According to him. In this, he's quite tolerable. Right. I th- something cha- Is he tolerable? What? Well, because Charlie's Theron is clearly the tallest out oh, of I see the where you're going entire with cast. See, see where you're going with that. Apparently he wore heels for a lot of this. Okay, right. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Some, something's happened to him between now and the Transformers movies yeah. to make him Fame? a nightmare to watch. Human growth hormone? Probably both of those two things, <laughs> sure. yes. What I find fascinating about this also is Edward Norton was contractually obligated to do this movie. For the studio, he'd signed on to three, but he kept rejecting scripts. And this is off the back of like primal fear from huh. years earlier. Yeah, right. So they forced him into this. And he was like, I'll grow a weird lopsided mustache. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That'll teach him. Because apparently on set, he was mean to the cast and the crew and he clashed with everybody. You know, with like American History X, he kicked off the director and did his own edit. Incredible Hulk, I think he attempted Incredible to do Hulk, as well. Incredible Hulk, a similar thing, and that's kind of why he's out of the universe. But apparently they sent him a gift when the movie ended up doing well, because it did, and it made quite a bit of money. And he sent it back with a note that said, give this to somebody you actually like, or someone who actually likes you. Brutal. (laughs) But also, another fun fact, Edward Norton chose his wardrobe to make his character a little quirky. So I guess he was into it yeah, <laughs> right. in some uh-huh. respect. You know how some people, you're, you're, you work at the video store or whatever. That's a dated reference. But you know, you're, you work... You work a, at one of those DVD rental... Vending machines. Vending machines, yeah. Right. But you know, you work there. You don't like the job, so you make your, your name tag a little crooked. Sure. It's just a little, oh, okay. just a little way of, you know, just, just sticking it to the man. Well, that's what he was doing. Edward Norton's character, though, he does get his comeuppance, Mason. They march him away and he's like, oh, you guys. But we know that he's going to be... Torture to death in a in a warehouse. Also, those lines are eighty yard as he's being dragged away. You could zoom in on his face and he's just his mouth's just not moving. But he's like, come on, don't do this. <laughs> but he's not <laughs> saying anything. I see. Yeah. Here's something I didn't like about this movie. Seth Green's character is a real creep. He's monitoring his ex's phone calls. Oh yeah, that's his, right. His dream is to buy a sound system that's so good it'll blow the clothes off a woman. And when it does at the end, <laughs> we don't see it, but she screams. Because she's deaf. She's deaf and nude yeah. in a strange man's house, yes. If you blast somebody with enough sound to tear their clothes off, uh-huh. you've probably killed that person. Well, you've, you've gotten rid of the top layer of their skin as well, <laughs> sure. certainly, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, off the back of this movie, first of all, it pioneered flying a helicopter under an overpass for real. That's impre- Incred- that was impressive. I know, right? It's like three feet off the ground. All that helicopter is real, because mostly helicopters now are all CGI. You can't even get a real helicopter in Hollywood anymore. Mm. It's PC gone mad, Max. <laughs> Absolutely it you is, You know yeah. that. There was a 22% increase in sales. Of that helicopter. No, no, sorry. In, uh, of Mini Coopers. In Mini Coopers. And of course, there was a uh, sequel we talked about, the Brazilian job in development, but it's just in development hell. Every few years, someone will be like, yeah, we're doing it. And the last thing we heard about it was in 2015, Mark Wahlberg said it was still in active development. But I think The Fast and Furious and probably the Talk franchise. Oh, if you remember yeah. the movie Talk. Yeah, of course I do. It's, already, it's Fast it's, and Furious, but motorcycles. Yeah, that's remember. right. It's already kind of killed any chance of that happening. Yeah, I, guess. I think. But but that's the thing, though, because mm. I think it's a whole different animal to a Fast and the Furious movie. Yeah. I feel like there's more smarts to it. Yeah. But maybe that's it. Yeah, but I would still see another one of these. Also, this cast, they look mostly the same and they're all doing these kind of movies ish. It's true, yeah. Yeah. But the reason we're talking about this in relation to Fast and Furious is because in Hobbs and Shaw, Jason Statham's character, Hobbs or Shaw, (laughs) walks past his collection of cars and there's a Mini Cooper from 2003 Mm -hmm. or that era in his collection and he says, that was from a job I did in Italy a few years ago, mate. Don't ever worry about it, governor. 
You remember? I do remember, yes. Thank you for playing that clip from the movie. <laughs> so, but the thing is, it's more of a nod than a Absolutely. tying it's, it in. It's a it's stretch. Not, yeah, also, it's not the car that he drove. I think he drove the white one. Mm -hmm. Also, he didn't do that job in Italy. He did it in Los Angeles. Yes. But people don't get the reference if he went, it's a job I did in Los Angeles. That's true. But earlier than that, a guy stole some gold from... It's a whole... Donald Sutherland. Donald Sutherland was there. Remember him? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, they're different film studios, so... But that's the Italian job, 2000. And three. I would say if you haven't been spoiled by the trailer or this video, mm -hmm. then it's worth it's okay. I think it's, it's worth, worth a watch. watch. I think man. it's definitely worth a watch. Yeah, yeah. it's a really mm. decent cast. It's a decent action movie slash heist movie. You like a funny little moustache on Edward Norton and a silk shirt? You got it. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Just Google Napster <laughs> beforehand so you know what you're getting into. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Anyways, this has been Caravan of Garbage. We do this every week. You got something that you want us to look at? No problem at all. Next week's Blade. It's already edited. you got no choice. It's yeah, going to be Blade. From, it's from weeks ago. Also, we do a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. Recently, we did do an episode on Hobbs and Shaw. It comes out every Monday. That is linked below. I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. And that's this video. Uh, yes, it is. Goodbye, I guess. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Grab that gold bar from a safe. Blow it through a floor and then... That's a crime. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> You're right. Don't do crimes, folks. 